let's get a peek at Tom's view of the world. Here's Tom Trenton. Anybody have any idea what that is? No, you don't. What is it, Kenny? <laughs> yeah, let's see Alabama fight. <laughs> ah, wait a minute, don't go away. Now the real test. Don't look at my computer. You ready? ready? All right, here we go. Now the real test. Here we go. Cheer, cheer for old Notre Dame. <laughs> All right. That's the fight song we want to hear. Not that Alabama stuff. Alabama's going down. Twenty-one. I'm giving 21 points. <laughs> and maybe 28 by game time. All right. Alabama. I think we get a lot of takers on that. No <laughs> tide. Not roll tide. No tide. No tide. <laughs> this is Notre Dame's year. It's their. Uh, it's a year of destiny. It's gonna happen, and God is on their side anyway. Well, we'll yeah. see. We'll see if God is Catholic or Baptist. We'll, <laughs> we'll find out tomorrow what the deal is with that. Chief Touchdown Jesus will come through for you. But man. I have one ticket. It's going for uh, sixty thousand dollars. I have a fifty-yard line ticket. If anybody, I probably get calls on that. <laughs> no, I do not. But I am looking for a fifty-yard uh, line ticket. They're going for sixty grand. I have about $22 on me, so but it's cash. So I'll do a cash deal with you right now, 22 bucks. I'll buy that ticket. You have to waste your time going down there, sweaty people, noise, drinking, a bit loud. All that. Go sit home, yeah. watch it. 20, you make $22. 20, and look at all the money you're going to save by not going to That's the game. That's it. All the parking, $75, this, that, the other thing. And who cares? You know, it's a national championship. It's a big deal. <laughs> but I've been to a few of the national championships. They are real. You know what? I went to uh, Notre Dame's national championship. They played in the Orange. Oh, Kenny, I need your help. I don't remember this year. Now, I, you you remembered when I went to Miami and uh, Alabama. But I also went to Notre Dame at the Orange Bowl. What year was that? Against Colorado? Yes, yes, yes. That would be, uh, it was from the 1991 season, but it would have been January 1st, 1992. No, I think the... Um, the Alabama game was then. Wasn't oh, you're right, you're right. That would be the 90 season, so January 1st, 1991. 91, okay. That With makes the phantom sense. Uh, clip call on Ishmael at the end. That's right. <laughs> That's right. I was sitting down on the, about the 10-yard line and saw that. Um, What's yeah. the phantom clip call? Yeah, what the, I, I forget what the implication no, no, of it was. Yeah, what is it? Rocket Ishmael returned a punt that would have been a winning touchdown for Notre Dame. A clip was called on the play. Replay revealed that there was no clip on the play. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> okay. Uh, Buffaloes. The Buffaloes. Um, uh, man. All right. Well, anyway, uh, I think the ticket he was. A re- he, uh, he is like an excitement. Oh, he, he, yeah. he, he he's great on this stuff. I think, the, I think I paid $4 for the ticket back in 1991, <laughs> you know. Um, and now literally a $60,000 for a 50-yard line seat. And the nosebleed at uh, whatever the name of the stadium now is, Sunshine, Sun Life, whatever, thousand bucks for the seats up at top, uh, up at the top. Um, but you know what? It is an experience. It's it's really an experience. Well, I uh, went down to my uh, car last night, and as I'm going down the car, I, I'm hearing, hoo, 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 go, go, go. And then I go, what the heck is all this noise? And so I walk around the thing, and I, it, gets, it gets louder and louder and louder, and I go. And all of a sudden, I hear that that stupid fight song. <laughs> da, 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 oh, this one right here. Yeah. <laughs> With the fans, I tell you what, the fans down here are just going nuts, so crazy. I mean, the Notre Dame fans are just 
a lot, lot more fan support. I'm just going to let this play in the background for the rest of the show. <laughs> we'll see how it plays tomorrow. Yeah, it's it's a little better. Well, it's a little better. All I hope is that the Alabama fan that Alabama doesn't win, just so I don't have to hear the Alabama roll fan. died people. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know. They're, All right, well, that's going to be very – I got one more for Kenny. I got one more for Kenny. Um, the first national championship I went to, I bet the four of them, I guess. The first one was – I'm just going to tell you uh, the quarterback. And okay. we'll see if he can, if he can uh, pull it off. Burt Jones. Oh, so you'd be talking about LSU. <laughs> yes. I don't think Burt Jones won a national title at LSU because I think no, he was he there didn't. in the 60s he was a and losing, 70s. He was a losing uh, quarterback. Burt Jones was a losing quarterback? In the national championship game. Then Who was the winning quarterback? Uh, I forget the quarterback, but I know the winning team because I was on the sidelines cheering for the uh, uh, Big Red, man. Nebraska? Nebraska and LSU. Check that. What year was okay, that? Okay, so that would have had to be before Tom Osborne, so it's probably late 60s. 71. Okay. It, it was uh, the... That was before he was born. So. 71 or 72. <laughs> I went to that game, and it's a long story, and it's got a lot of illegal stuff in it, but <laughs> I was on the field... Oh, that's right. That's, that's, that's your With right. a 50-foot sign that said, number one, leading the cheers for the Nebraska... Fifty thousand people, me and a couple of guys uh, running around with this goofy sign, and and it's just a crazy story. Well, they, they, we're on the we're on the front page of everything, TV, all of all yeah. But it wasn't the the ESPN wasn't even there back then. No, no, you, it was the Miami Herald, and uh, it was at the it was at the Orange Bowl. Um, but uh, and we were dancing with the cheerleaders, you know, as they're doing the cheers. We 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 totally faked our way onto the field, <laughs> like we were a special team with a special sign. We had no seats. We 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 uh, what we did? We went down you and scalped scanned tickets. Your, you scanned your way in completely. We scalped <laughs> tickets, and we, and there were the Orange Bowl nosebleed tickets for th- literally three dollars. Right, yeah, okay. going back a few years. So we got inside. And we go, we're not sitting up here, you know. Right, right, right. Uh, so we we took the sign and went to one end of the uh, orange bowl and hung it over the, uh, the like the the end of where the seats are on the second level. Well, all of a sudden, a security comes up and says, "You're blocking people downstairs. You can't hang your fifty foot by five foot sign and all this." So we said, "Okay." So I said to the other guys, I said, let's just bring it on the field. We'll tell them where the coach is to sign for, the, for Nebraska. Because they were going for number one, and the sign said number one. And we had kind of removed the sign from another place. Um, and so we, we took the we, – we run down. We borrowed the sign. We borrowed the sign for a while. We run down to the field, and all the security's there, and we got this big vinyl thing. And we go, we got the coach's sign. And they go, you got the sign? Yeah, we have the coach's sign. They have the coach's sign. sign. Boom. And <laughs> they escort us on the field, security. Right we, past all, all Right the... past everybody. We go, what are we doing now? We have, this was not well planned out. This is, you know, college lunatic kids. So we go, what do we do now? You know? So um, we, we unroll this sign, and all of a sudden, the Nebraska side goes crazy. Then we figure out, all right, we're, we're here it. for the rest of the game. <laughs> this is going to be okay, you know. And and we were there, and what a game it was. And Nebraska won the national championship, and uh, well, that's cool. got me killed, actually. <laughs> that's another story. That's not a good story, that one. Um, all right, anyway, we're here, Tom Trento, Trento Vision, 415 p.m. East Coast time, just four hours to game time, ladies and gentlemen, tonight. Um, but before we do that, we have to solve the problem, uh, the world's problems of Islamic Jihad, and more importantly, the uh, the disheveled and chaotic condition of the conservative party. Uh, you, can, you can include the Republican Party in that, but uh, party's in disarray right now. If they can't get this thing straight, as you're hearing some of the Tea Party experts we've had on, can't get this fiscal cliff straightened out it reminds me mark cj's not here right now mike's here mark's here right. i'm here it reminds me of uh of, a, of an illustration because right now we're going into the debt ceiling issue and you know the whole debt ceiling is by law there's a ceiling to the amount of money 
You, you know, no, there's not. There's no ceiling time. You, you, you're, you're making it up. It's an unlimited supply of money. We just print it, and, and, and it's there. Well, yeah, but it's the way it's supposed to work. There's a limit to the amount of money the United States can borrow each fiscal year, and um, and you got to live within your budget. The, the audacity of Washington D.C., the audacity of the IRS, the audacity. The audacity of 16,000 more IRS agents coming online to implement Obamacare. The audacity of these people to tell Americans, struggling, hardworking Americans, you've got to live within your budget, you've got to pay all your bills, you can't default, we're going to throw you out of your house, all of that. When they go, oh, guess what, we don't have enough money, we've overspent, we're just going to make believe that we didn't overspend. We're going to raise the debt ceiling so we can tell the Fed to print more money. Actually, the Bureau of Engraving and Printing to print more money. And, um, you know, we'll just keep doing that. And who the hell cares? Somebody 25 years from now will commit suicide or a bunch of people will because they can't pay these bills. That's nice. It reminds me of this illustration. Mark, you walk into, you go home, you walk into your home. Right. You open a door and boom, you get hit with crap. I, I mean, I don't mean like, old furniture i mean sewage crap real live human feces it's just it's it's in your house the to- your toilet bowl backed up you were away for a week it just filled the thing right to the ceiling you slam the door closed and you go oh my god i've got to get some contractors here and raise the ceiling <laughs> i've got to cut the roof off make it higher so the crap has some place to go it can it can fill the house more or you say I gotta pump some of this stuff out of here. <laughs> no, 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 no. What do you do? Do you raise the ceiling of your house, allowing more garbage, more bad spending, more nonsensical fiscal policies, or do you say, you know what, we've got to cut this stuff back? We got to start <laughs> pumping out the bad practices and habits on an economic plane. No, what you do is you actually build another house right next to it, ah, and such. you leave and you leave that house all filled up with crap because that's. You, you can't fix that house because yeah. we're just going to go. And what we're going to do is we're going to start filling up the next house, you know, start backing up the toilets and start filling that up. So you can just at least walk in the crap for a while. Then when that house fills up, we build another house and we just and we just forget about the old houses. Well, we thought we thought we thought that the Tea Party back in uh, when it got started, we're going to go into a little bit of that right now. Uh, the Tea Party had um, the uh, the suave. It had the panache. The gravitas. It had the gravitas. It had the moment in history, we thought, where it could uh, make a continued impact into the American government. But it looks, it looks, folks, that uh, the Tea Party is dead. Um, you're disagreeing with I'm that. I'm disagreeing with you. 888-565-1470. 888-565-1470. Do you think... The Tea Party movement in the United States of America that started back in either 2007 or 2009. We'll go through a little bit of that in a moment. Do you think the Tea Party movement is dead or is it on life support or is it alive and thriving? We'd like to hear uh, your thoughts. 888-565-1470. And uh, let's see if one of our good friends, uh, Valanda, has any input on this. Valanda. You're with Tom and Mark and Mike and no CJ, we're sad to say today. Yeah, I miss her. Yes. Yeah, so I don't know I miss her. Take care. Listen, Tom, I'm one of the believers, and I was listening at your guest, uh, Joe Dugan. There's a reason why Jim DeMitt resigned, went over to the Heritage Foundation. Um, I personally think the, tea, the um, tea Party right now, it might be on life support, but if they don't do something, it's speed diving into death. And I'll tell you why. <laughs> speed that's speed pretty diving into death is pretty good. First, first, of, first of all, when the Republicans had the pin, the gerrymandering pin, what was one of the first things they did? Now, I live in a district. I live in Alfie Hastings District. It's a hodgepodge of garbage. But what happened? One of the first districts they went to was 22. And what did they do? They, they basically redrew it. They put in some more elements, and they knew what they were doing. They dro- literally drove uh, Congressman West out of their district. Right. This is my opinion. Number two, 
and, and mind you, this is the Republican Party because they knew what the machine was going to do, I think, up north. They knew Martin County, and I don't care what anybody said, and I was listening to Brian Craig this morning talking about how Alan West didn't shake the hand of the sheriff. If that's the case, he would have lost at the primary level, but he didn't. Um, the second part here is, quite frankly, the Tea Party is probably maybe in the wrong spot. They need that we need now, given what the Democrats have done to the precincts, we need some federal attorneys. We now need attorneys on both sides to monitor these elections. Because most of the supervisor elections, and I can tell you uh, up, up front, to be quite honest with you, they tend to be partial towards the Democrats. Yeah. And if you have somebody with that kind of mentality over an organization, you're going to have a certain flow of corruption. And I, know, and I know of what I speak. That's all, that's all I'm going to say right there, to be, to be quite honest with you. Uh, if we don't get control of the election process, we're done. That, that's, just, that's, that's just my uh, personal opinion. But, I don't, but first of all, the Republicans do not want Tea Party elements in their party any longer. I understand they also uh, redrew the district of Michelle Bachman. And... She almost lost. Almost I, lost. I, yeah. I don't. I don't know about the, all the all the other ones, but to be quite honest with you, the Tea Party, the, the Republicans don't want the Tea Party there. They really don't. They're becoming a nuisance, and they want to be able to do like they did the other day and capitulate on every front. Because quite frankly, to be honest with you, mm. they probably want the economy in the crapper, so they think that by 2016 we'll all be so tired of Democrats, we'll throw them all out. But I got have news for them. They have allowed the Democrats to get control of the election process. Yep. And if yep. they get control of the precincts, and, I, and, and to be quite honest with you, uh, uh, Tom and, and Mike, I don't know what you've been seeing, but there are a lot of uh, people there I would trust with a with a ten foot pole with my vote. I really wouldn't. All right, thank you. Uh, if they get control of that. You're, no, you're right, Valana. We got a we got a bunch of people on hold. We're gonna uh, run run through some of the folks here. Uh, thank you for your um, right on insights for sure. Do we have uh, Danita on? Yeah, why don't, why don't you bring uh, Danita on, Mark, and we'll let uh, yeah. one of the Tea Party leaders of South Florida kind of weigh in on what Valanda said and what the others are saying. Danita. Hi there, guys. Hey, uh, how happy you doing? New Year and Molan Leve. Hey, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, One yeah. of the 300, yeah. Come and take them, it means. Come and Absolutely. take them. Right. How are you right. How are you today? Uh, I'm doing real well, thanks. Uh, you know, getting on, getting on and moving on in spite of the elections and so on. Very depressing, but, you know, we got to live in it, so. Are you dead, Danita? Heavens to Betsy, no. Because when people and that'll when, never happen. When people, I don't believe the Tea Parties will ever go away now. Because honestly, they've always been here. Really, they've been present present in the minds of the of the people of the United States, and it's an ideal and a spirit. And uh, we didn't have a name always, and we weren't organized. But we're here today, and we're here to stay. When when somebody. Th- who knows you thinks of the Tea Party, they think of of you for a lot of reasons. And w- what we're addressing today, we're, we're we just came out of this. I don't know what took place in Washington D.C. over the past couple of weeks. President's there, he's not there. He flies to, to Hawaii. Yeah. He comes, comes back, back. Flies back to it's, Hawaii. It's like you know, yeah. I'll take the tri reel to Miami. A friggin' airplane cost one and a, one point six million dollars every time you right. you, you fly you one the, way. Right. Yeah. So you know, six seven million dollars, and Boehner is who knows where. And um, what is the Tea Party? If somebody, I have liberal friends and relatives who say, "What is your stupid Tea Party?" Define it. How would you define the Tea Party? Well, I think our Tea Party, Tea Party Fort Lauderdale, has never fallen into um, just the classic texting up already. Okay, we've never just been about that. Um, and, uh, you know, we've taken a lot of criticism for that, but I was involved with things before there ever was any mention of a Tea Party, and I couldn't just drop those things to just go on and talk about our money in the United States of America. Um, Tea Party Fort Lauderdale this year, we have a plan, and it's completely different. 
than our plans of the last four years. Um, those efforts were not effective in this past election. And our new ones are um, just kind of uniquely designed to uh, just to live in the zeitgeist of the worst president. Uh, zeitgeist, that's a great in, term. In, the Amer in all of America's history. I, you know, Obamacare's here. What am I going to do? You know, a trillion dollar tax, it's here. What am I going to do? There's absolutely nothing we can do in, in that snake pit of Washington and that entire brood of vipers who we are living with. So Tea Party's just going on. Um, we're not, um, we're kind of underground. And, uh, you know, we've always held protests when appropriate and hosted speakers and educators uh, to teach our community about Sharia and Islamic terrorism. And, and we will continue to do those things. But the people are educated now, I believe. I mean, it's the same ones who come to hear these speakers. And so um, we're just, uh, you know, I've always said, you know, we have to do these things for for Israel and, and uh, against Islam because... In my thinking, like text enough already, um, who cares about what's in their wallet and even about their grandchildren's future if we're all dead? Yeah. And, and Danita is referring to taxed enough already acronym, T-E-A, Tea Party. Right. That, that, uh, well, hang on, Danita. Let me bring on another caller. And sure. um, uh, who do we have there? Matt. Uh, we have Matt. Yeah, Matt, you're with Tom and Mark. How are you? I'm fantastic. How are you guys? We're doing, doing good. good. We're doing, doing good. good. We're trying to get a handle on whether or not the Tea Party is dead, on life support, a great idea whose time has passed, something mm -hmm. for the future, mm -hmm. you know, third party. I mean, what the deal is. What are your thoughts, Matt? Well, I'll tell you, I, uh, as uh, Danita just said, I don't think the Tea Party will ever go away in the sense that it's comprised of Americans who believe in individual rights and free markets. So, uh, the, the question is, like you say, can it be effective in terms of a movement and influencing uh, elections and policy? And uh, I think I, I take a little bit different uh, tack, in fact, opposite of uh, what Danita just said. I think the reason the Tea Party was ineffective in the last cycle was because they, there, there was no singular focus. They got away from we, I say they, we got away from the, the singular message of the fiscal issues. If you'll recall, the Tea Party went mainstream with Rick Santelli's rant on CNBC. Right. And, uh, to me, that, that was the – I mean, you had Ron Paul people having Tea Parties back in 2006, 2007. But that was the Rick Santelli rant about the fiscal issues is the what rant. spawned the, the, mass, you know, the massive protest. And that is an issue that the wasteful spending, the debt – that is an issue that 80 or 90 percent of Americans, well, maybe not that, 75 or 80 percent of Americans can get behind. And what happened, what I've seen happen here locally in my area is as you start adding these other issues, you lose support. Because by definition, if you throw in, uh, you know, pro-life versus pro-choice or any of those issues, you automatically lose support. And so I've, I've had many if conversations with people. Well, hang on, Danita. We're going to let Matt finish, and then uh, okay. because this is this is really the divide right now. Go ahead, Matt. It is. It is. And I will tell you, I have talked to I mean dozens of people. I travel the state in my job, so I talk to business people. And the recurring theme, the question that I always get is, how come nobody in the Tea Party talks about spending anymore? Like all, the, and, and I will tell you, I've been to a couple of meetings here just in the last two months where every issue uh, that you could imagine has been mentioned at the meeting except for the spending and the fiscal issues. And so I think, uh, you know, you've got to get back to the basics. You've got to look at the issue that, that you can have. The, the Tea Party should be about the fiscal, and it should be the biggest possible tent so that all of these groups can come together as a coalition and unite around the fiscal issues. And, and you can still do, you know, the individual groups can do their thing separately but that, to me, is, is really it's a branding uh, issue. It's the, you know, the media seizes on uh, some of the fringe elements, if you will, to, to uh, you know, really kind of ridicule the movement, if you know what I mean. So that's, uh, uh, that's where I'm at. I mean, that's, that's going to be our focus this Thursday at our next organization. I right, know, Matt, let's, uh, you're with um, Brevard County, correct? Uh, Brevard, yes. The Brevard Tea Party up there, you, you started that? That's correct. I All right, for, for, our, 
for our listeners and viewers, it's uh, 31 minutes past 4 o'clock. Tom Trento on Trento Vision with Mark and Mike here. No CJ today. We're, uh, we're addressing the issue of the Tea Party, this uh, unique movement that grew out either in 2006-07 through, through um, Ron and Rand Paul uh, or the uh, San Tilly rant. Right. You got, oh, wait, we got this. Uh, can you play it? it? Yeah. Also, we want to get to our task force right now. Rick Santelli and Jason Roney of Sharma Capital are standing by at the CME Group in Chicago. And, and Rick, have you been listening to this conversation? Listening to it. February 19th, 2009. To it because Mr. Ross has nailed it. You know, the, the government is promoting bad behavior because we certainly don't want to put stimulus for it and give people a whopping 8 or $10 in their check and think that they ought to save it. And in terms of modifications, I'll tell you what, I have an idea. You know, the, the new administration's big on computers and technology. How about this, President and new administration? Why don't you put up a website to have people vote on the Internet as a referendum to see if we really want to subsidize the losers' mortgages, or would we like to at least buy cars and buy houses in foreclosure and give them to people that might have a chance to actually prosper down the road and reward people that could carry the water instead of drink the water. Hey, Rick, That's it, a novel idea. Hey, hey Rick, did you... What? Who oh, thought of that? Yeah, they're, 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 like putty, they're like putty in your hands. Did you hear No, they're not, Joe. They're not like putty in our hands. This is America. How many of you people want to pay for your neighbor's mortgage that has an extra bathroom and can't pay their bills? Raise their hand. How about we all... President Obama, are you listening? How about we all stop paying our mortgage? It's a moral hazard. <laughs> this is like Bob roll here. I'm getting scared. I'm glad I'm, yeah. I'm glad I'm a... you guys Don't get scared, get some Joe. Bricks and They're bass. already scaring you. You know, Cuba used to have mansions and, and a relatively decent economy. They moved from the individual to the collective. Now they're driving 54 Chevys. Maybe the last great car to come out of Detroit. Yeah, driving... <laughs> <laughs> all right. That's Rick Santelli in February of 2009. Matt, that's what you were just saying is sort of where the uh, the historic moment everyone points to about the origin of the Tea Party movement that came out of that. Well, play the devil's advocate here. Wait, hang on, hang on. How, how did you get involved? Let me, these are two Tea Party leaders here. Okay. How did you get involved, Matt, um, with the Brevard uh, Tea Party? Actually, my, my first, uh, uh, first, first uh, became active in politics in the 07 Ron Paul campaign. I was a total... Uh, you know, never been involved in anything before, and uh, somebody told me about Ron Paul, and I was like, oh, well, I'll, you know, this guy seems okay. And so so that was my first, uh, you know, taste, if you will, of, of uh, politics and campaigns, and, and by virtue of that campaign, I became involved in the local executive, the Republican Executive Committee here. And then uh, during that period, I actually met uh, a gentleman here who was a clerk of courts who really turned my uh, – uh, or how do I want to say it, showed, showed me what happens at the local level. You know, it was the classic, if you think Washington, D.C. is bad, look right here in your own backyard at, at the yeah. corruption and the, the waste and the mismanagement that happens here. And so he really got me uh, fired up. And so we, like you say, the, the Santelli rant, we heard that the Orlando folks uh, were talking about doing a tea party, and we did our first one on April 19th instead of April 15th. And we had, you know, 1,500 people at one of the local parks. So it was a really nice event. And then our big – we followed that up with a 4th of July event in 2009 where we turned out almost 4,000 people at the local stadium on the 4th of July. So that was a really big deal. We were on the front page of the newspaper. But, uh, you know, that's I, – I, I became involved – Yeah, we, we, we lost. We lost Matt. Maybe. Um, you there, Matt? Yeah. Sorry, my headset cut out. No, no problem. Okay. So, so that's how you got involved, uh, and Mary. Uh, whoever, well, Mary, you're on hold. I'm going to talk with um, Danita and Matt right now to establish the critical uh, uh, issue within the Tea Party. So you can you can hang on, Mary, or you can call back in a, in a little bit when uh, these guys get off. I, right, Danita. You said at the outset, and, and you are uh, the Fort Lauderdale Tea Party. You've been doing it for many years uh, in a phenomenal way. You think the Tea Party needs to include other issues than just the fiscal issue. Matt, you think it's just the fiscal issues. 
Um, and that's been an internal debate that's been going on. Danita, make your argument, uh, you know, take a minute or so to make your argument why you think going forward the Tea Party should include other issues besides um, taxing, size of the federal government, and uh, economic right. discipline. Well, I, because I don't, I, these things are connected. I just don't know how you can just talk about that, about spending and nothing else, um, because because it's connected to everything else. I mean, how can you talk about a jobs issue, for instance, and not talk about illegal immigration? How can you, you know, how can you talk, how can you, well, these, well, uh, there's, um, there's, you just cannot separate I, these issues I, like this. this. I, gotta, I can't imagine I'll, I'll that, that, um, that I think Matt needs to include for himself and for his Tea Party Islam. And if his people aren't educated about that, I think that he, he has a, a duty to do that. Hey, Matt, um, this is Tom. I, I read a recent uh, poll uh, of Tea Party adherents, people that consider themselves part of the movement Tea Party. And I haven't heard a good definition yet, you know, for quantifying and qualifying what the Tea Party is. But uh, 60, 70 percent are, are white men and um, very high, 73, 80% believe that Islam, the, the, believe that the president's policies, pro-Arabic, pro-Islamic policies are detrimental to the United States. And these are Tea Party members. Yet the Tea Party has uh, not integrated the national security piece about Islam, jihadis, into its movement. How do you uh, explain the absence of that, and why do you think it's tactically wise? Well, I think, I mean, you've got all that. I guess my question is, why does the Tea Party have to be everything to all people? Because, again, if you come at it from the Tea Party is supposed to be your umbrella. It's supposed to be your big tent it, on the issues that every almost everybody can come together on. And so, again, by virtue of the way the media portrays us and, and does all these things, it automatically uh, alienates some people. You know, the, the, the more uninformed I agree – that the you know president's leanings uh, in that respect are disturbing to say the least. But I, I guess I'm just not following uh, why, from a marketing or branding perspective, the Tea Party has to have all of these uh, uh, components or angles. Like, why can't the Tea Party just be about fiscal? And one thing I did want to quantify is when I say fiscal, one of the very important points Rick Fantelli did actually convey a moral message in that short rant, and that was that no man is entitled to the fruits of another man's labor. I think that is uh, the moral issue, is that nobody is entitled to take, uh, you know, the, the looters are not entitled to take from the producers. And so that's such a powerful message. I don't understand uh, why there is this desire to uh, tack on all of these other issues. If you just run with the surefire winner and you say, okay, we vetted these candidates and they're rock solid on the fiscal stuff, then the other groups can vet them on their mm -hmm. particular issue. So I, I just, I, I just, just like hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, uh, hang on. <laughs> Mark's chopping at the bit here, well, but I have two Tea Party well, leaders. Well, I want to ask Matt a question. Uh, hang on. Well, I've got to give Danita a chance to respond. Uh, Danita, Matt's making sense tactically. That, uh, you know, the overall strategy, obviously, is to bring in all the issues. But on a tactical basis, it seems to make sense to keep, uh, hi from his point of view, I don't know if I agree with him, seems to make sense to keep the, uh, the Tea Party focus narrow enough so it's understood and resonates with the largest am amount of people. What are your thoughts on that? Then I'll have Mark come in. Well, uh, uh, it's very hard for me to speak about that because that's just in four years, and we started one week after Santelli's rant. rant uh, uh, and for us, it, it was it was never that we had thousands of people on on April fifteenth as well, you know. And and that's part of it, you know. I mean, but for Tea Party Fort Lauderdale, it's just never been about that. We have committees going now, and uh, we're breaking down, and uh, we're doing things completely differently, as I said, and. Um, and we're just taking a totally different approach, and it will include, you know, it will it will include the economy, but 
we're probably going to be more local. It's going to, you know, it's going to have to do with the school board. With, with I don't want to say very much, but with many different things, we have somebody coming to talk to us about um, how they won in their county um, to certain positions, the commissions, and so on. And so I just think that um, uh, that we have to come at it at a completely different way. And I and I just cannot even ever imagine imagine just talking about spending and taxation because our nation is so much more than that we are being swallowed by Islam All right let me let me let me by immigration and amnesty soon Let me clarify what we're doing here for for the audience cuz um, if you're just tuning in at 41 minutes past 4 o'clock we have um, Matt Nye is that how you pronounce it Matt That's that's correct Matt Nye from Brevard County uh, involved the Brevard County Tea Party, and Danita Kilcullen from Fort Lauderdale, Fort Lauderdale Tea Party, two tremendous patriot warriors in the United States of America that have given their, uh, their, their honor, their treasure, their sacred honor, their blood, their sweat, their tears, all of that to fight for America. But the, the issue at hand is whether or not the Tea Party is alive and where it goes from here. And the distinction between these two experts and two leaders uh, Matt's basically saying, uh, let's keep the origin of the original uh, idea, uh, tactical approach of the Tea Party, very focused, very limited on fiscal issues. Let's keep that. That has the greatest tactical use to get the most amount of people. And Danita's saying, well, how do you do that? Because so much of this is interrelated that you've got to bring in some of the other issues. I think part of the problem with the two modalities to uh, to implementing an, a, a movement called the Tea Party, is that the Tea Party doesn't have a uh, OED, you know, Oxford English Dictionary definition that is definitive and and uh, and and uh, resolved. It is a movement in flux, and these things evolve as time goes through. As you get into different elections, different campaigns. People who are part of the movement say, we need to do a little bit more over here, as Danita is saying. And so her interpretation of the Tea Party includes the national security issues, the immigration issues, the school local board issues. It's becoming more, almost more of a, uh, a subset of a, of a party or a party in and of itself, which may make a lot of sense. Now, Mark, you've been chomping at the bit to say something. What do you want to say? Well, the question being is, is should, we, should we just focus uh, simply on the economic issue or should we broad, you know, expand in the horizons to include other issues to get a more broad appeal? My question being is, isn't that exactly what Romney did? He focused entirely on the economic issues. He didn't bring in any other issues, but he just stuck solely with the economic issues, did nothing else but the economic issues, even during the third debate where he had a perfect chance to knock it out of the park national security-wise. He took a pass on it, took a punt on it. And in, in, in that case, should not have uh, Mitt Romney been the perfect Tea Party candidate and shouldn't all the Tea Party people run out and voted for him? Yet they didn't. Why didn't, didn't they? Why did? Why did? Why didn't that work, Matt? Uh, yeah. Well, I disagree with quite a bit of your premise there. I, I, you know, you're talking about a presidential nominee who, you know, he was he was the father of socialized medicine in his state. I mean, you had the, the signature issue of this election was health care, and the Republicans. No, no, no. Actually, I, I disagree with you totally. He, he, he talked very little about health care because he didn't want the, the, the Romney care coming back on him. He talks no, no, almost you're, t- you're, entirely about uh, entirely about the economic issues. I, I, I disagree with you on that. I, I've listened to the whole thing. Mark, before no, you think, finish with I Matt, I want to say just Romney a couple things. A Go ahead. Candidate. I don't think you can even use that. I just I, I don't agree with the comparison at all. The, again, the question that I have is why can't the Tea Party appeal to the broadest, you know, have the most possible appeal and let the groups that do what they do best tackle those issues? That's, I guess I've just never understood, and uh, Danita said it best earlier, that she's been involved in all these different things for years and years prior to the Tea Party. And so my question is, if all of those different issues were winners, how come – there were These two other organizations didn't have a nationwide, you know, a, 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 a mass movement like this. That's, well, well, that's well, 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 the question being here, Matt, is if it is a Tea Party per se, like the Republican Party, the Democrat Party, and it gets elected, it has a person that's representing them in Congress. 
that should be their only issue that they represent the America on is the economic issue. I, I think that's very right. short-sighted. I, I think, hey, now coming up to defense of Israel, I mean, what do you do? I mean, where is it? Is it strictly economics, or do you not consider that uh, the Israeli economy is bringing in, you know, millions and tr- billions of dollars into the United States? I mean, I mean, to have just that one focus for a person or a candidate to come into that position of power I think is very short-sighted. Uh, well, I, honestly, I think if you focus on the fiscal issues and the, like you say, the the fact that we shouldn't be looting the producers, I, I honestly do think that takes care of quite a bit of it. I understand, yes, you've got foreign policy, policy issues. There are other issues. I, I guess all I'm saying is can we narrow the scope because, again, I'm using my own backyard as an example. Uh-huh. The, the, we have a very large – we have a, a 70-mile-long county. It's a very long, narrow strip, and so by virtue of our geography, we have a bunch of different groups that meet in various areas uh-huh. – throughout the county, and those groups each have, have you know, they've got their own uh, structure, their own issues, and what I have seen uh, repeatedly is they're so scattershot on these issues. I mean, they're just, they're, there are so many, it's impossible for them to focus on any of them. I mean, I was at a meeting a couple of weeks ago at a 912 group, and I mean, they must have rattled off 20 different things that they wanted to focus on, and they don't have you know, 20 people that can invest that kind of time. Right. right. No, so that's a good point. Just, well, it, it, you do, Matt, and Mark, you made a very good point that if if um, you campaign on a very select litany of issues and then you're elected, do you serve just on those? Obviously not. But if you go in the other direction, and then Danita will let you uh, weigh in and then got to try to get Mary in on the call. If you go the other direction and you say, well, the Tea Party uh, should by necessity, include at least the core issues of national security, immigration, education, uh, law, media, these sort of cultural issues, then what is the distinctive of the Tea Party? It just becomes part of a conservative movement. So so there has to be a dividing line in terms of uh, specifying this thing historically, the Tea Party. Question is, where does it morph from here? Danita, you weigh in, and then uh, I'm going to go right, to Mary. All right, this is going to take me less than a minute. Tea Party okay. Fort Lauderdale supports a fundamental change in how government conducts business at the municipal, county, state, and federal levels. We are therefore organized to encourage the interpretation of the Constitution, reduce government spending and lower taxes, reduce the national debt and federal budget deficit, maintain a strong national defense, protect unalienable rights as given by our Creator, oversee and develop local and state political objectives, support candidates of conservative principles and strong moral character, expose hostile groups whose actions threaten the welfare of the people of the United States of America, and promote the education of the people according to the tenets of the Declaration of Independence, the United States Constitution, and the Bill of Rights. That is our charter. And what does he Sounds mean? Great. And Matt, what do you disagree I agree with, with about? Yeah, I don't yeah, yeah. disagree with anything in there. I, I guess yeah. my question is how, and I don't know uh, Danita's stance on this, but how how would something like smart meters, which are being pushed across the entire that, – that's being pushed as an issue for tea parties across the state, how do smart meters fall under that charter? Like what is the uh, – uh, you, you see what I'm saying? That, that charter was beautiful. I agree with every word of it. But but how, how, how do you – when you get off in the weeds on smart meters – how, how does that apply to that? Well, I'll That's agree with you 100% I... as far as the allocation resources of time and, and well, what he was, you was, want to do. He was asking the need to look. Oh, okay. Oh, well, let, me, let, me, uh, let me bring Mary in. Is Mary still with us on the line here? Mary, are you still there? Hello, Mary, 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 quite contrary. Can I bring in, you only bring in two at a time. Oh, only two, okay. Um, all right, Danita, why don't you have the last word, then I'll well, bring the well, Okay, uh, well, smart meters was part of Agenda 21 and 750. I remember when our smart meter got put in at my house, and Mary. nobody asked us. And, uh, you know, my husband at the time went out and said, what, what are you doing? They said, well, we're putting in the such and such. We did not know at the time that it was part of a, uh, a, of a U.N. movement, you know, to take over the world. And so, yes, we'll, we'll fight smart meters, that is, but that is such an absolutely dense subject, Agenda 21 and 750. And I'm on those task forces every time they have one down here. I'm there. I have to be there. I have to be there. It is um, it is outrageous. And, and Matt, I think you should go to a, a 750 or Agenda 21 task force meeting 
when you can because I think that your mind will be blown. I really do. That's the I, other I'm, thing that's going to eat us alive. Yeah, I'm along familiar with, with Agenda Islam 21. I guess, and again, my question is, do you have, you have groups Bad dedicated lines. to that? You have, you have groups already dedicated to fighting Agenda 21. Why, would, why does that have to fall under the Tea Party umbrella? Do you know how many people in this world have never heard of Agenda 21 in your own community? A Maybe bunch. your own Tea Party members. Yeah, but but his his question, Danita, it's a fair question. It's you know, can the Tea Party do? Let me ask you this, Danita: Is there no end? Do you see the Tea Party as something with a? Well, you obviously don't. I'm, I'm answering my own question as I ask okay, it. Okay, no, I do, I do. But as I said, we're breaking into committees. We're having about five or six people this year on certain things. That's certainly one of our things. Agenda 21 is one of our things. I cannot do all these things. I cannot keep up with all these things. This is why we've chosen in 2013 to do it differently. All right, I, I think I see. I think I see. Given reports on all of these things every single week. I see that. I see the distinction both of you are making, and and you're both very accurate in your distinctions. Matt, your your distinction is the Tea Party is issue ori- oriented, and Danita, it's ideologically oriented. So the, the ideology of the left needs to be confronted by the ideology of the Tea Party, which is conservative, restrictive, all of that. Matt, you're more you're more focused on a uh, a slate of issues as opposed to an ideological. Well, um, no, except except the the again the ideological you know my the one moral imperative that I see again is theft is wrong. We should not be penalizing producers for producing. Sure, no, yeah, no, we all agree with that. Yeah. That's a, that, that is a. Uh, one last uh, thing, you know, too. Dr. Gary Cass is coming into town next week. You yes. know him, Tom? Yes. And we will be uh, educating high schoolers on the evils of jihad and Muhammad and Islam. Well, let's have him on the show. Have let's him uh, bring I, him in the studio. I thought you'd want to. Yeah, that'd right, be great. Absolutely. Yep. Okay, Danita okay. Kilcullen, thank you very, very much for being thank with us God today. Bless you guys. Love you. <laughs> thank you. Love you too. See you. Matt. What? Matt, take, oh, you still got Matt on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm good. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, uh, Matt, what do you see then uh, going forward from here? What's, what is your goal objective up there? We got about well, uh, uh, one minute. <laughs> okay, yeah. So, actually, it sounds like uh, we, we've been, we have been in the last couple of years working very effectively at the local level. So, we were able to get a couple of our uh, constitutional officers in. Uh, at one point, we had actually flipped one of the city councils where we actually uh, had a vote going, you know, the right way there, and, and it, we actually lost that uh, in the last election. But uh, it sounds like we're on very similar tracks. We are is organizing by committee as well. But what we're doing is we're basically replicating the Republican Party structure. We're going to organize by district, precinct, neighborhood, block, and then we're going to have our different committees that focus on school board, county commission, uh, you know, you, you pick the issue. But, again, we're going to let the, the, the side groups I – don't, I don't know what the appropriate term is – the affiliated groups handle, you know, so the Agenda 21 would fall under the agendas people, you know, and, and let them do their thing so that the Tea Party is focused on the core. All right, well, now, wait, let, me, let me get this straight because you, now you're saying the same thing that Danita is doing, but you stop short of calling the committee – that's working on Agenda 21 as part of the Tea Party. Correct. That seems to be a difference without a designation, you know? I mean, uh, a difference without no, a difference. It, 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 well, okay, I'm sorry. Let me rephrase. So so the the people, uh, we're, we're not going to have, I'm sorry, we're not going to have a committee on Agenda <laughs> 21 per se. Is that yeah, but but the but somebody is going to be doing. Well, we got to get going here. We're we're on a hard break. In any event, um, this is the kind of work we need to do in the conservative movement to sort these things out and figure out exactly uh, <clears throat> what this Tea Party is all about. Now, not what it was about, but what it needs to be about in order to win. Because uh, we didn't win, if you noticed, in the last election. All right, so, Matt. Great, great work. Right. Great I'll work. see you. Keep up the great work, Matt. Appreciate what you, everything you're doing, my friend. Thank you very, very much. We'll see you now.
thanks for tuning in to Trento Vision, where bad ideas get pulverized and the truth will set you free. Tom Trento can be reached at 561-319-5533 or tom at trentovision.tv. And tune in again weekdays from 3 to 6 p.m. on AM 1470 WNN.